Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. As we get older, some things just don't work like they used to. That can present challenges in accessing all or part of your home. This week, we look at the solutions. Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford, the voice of home improvement with projects, tips, and ideas to help you improve your home. It's inevitable. We all get older and some of the more simple things start to be a little more difficult. That also means that for many homeowners, they face a lot of obstacles around their homes. Going up and down stairs, that starts being a problem. And narrow doorways, narrow hallways, that also can be a problem. Now whether it's a limitation that you're facing or one of your family members, there has to be a solution. And there is. It's a concept called aging in place. Now whether the physical limitations are a result of age or illness or an accident, most people want to stay in familiar surroundings like their home. Well, aging in place addresses these concerns by taking care of any changes that are needed in the home so that you can stay where you're most familiar. Now this week we're in Houston, Texas talking with a contractor that specializes in this type of renovation and we'll look at some of the problems that homeowners face and some of the tools and techniques to address these. Now whether you're facing this situation right now or you can see it in your future, we'll share with you some ideas that'll show you how easy it is to make your home more accessible. Stay with us. This week we're looking at a concept called aging in place, which involves adapting an existing home to meet the changing physical needs of the homeowners. Now this is pretty important because 25% of the U.S. population is over 65 years of age or has some type of disability. Now for some folks that means the home that they've lived in for years and years no longer meets their needs. So the dilemma is to change the house so that it does meet their needs or to find a new one that wheel. Now this is the home of Dolores Sanders and in recent years her physical needs have changed making everyday activities more of a challenge than they should be. Her son Larry explained to us the challenges they faced and how they're addressing them. My parents built this house in 1967 <clears throat> and it was going to be their last home. They knew that when they built it. They knew that when they moved in. So they never intended to go anywhere else. And, and now we've come to a place where one part of it needs to be reconstructed in such a way that it really accommodates mother at this time in her life. The bathroom just needs to be more convenient for her. It needs to be for her caregivers. And one of the things that we're hoping that this will do is make the care of my mother easier so that she can stay in her own home instead of going to uh, some sort of facility which we just can't imagine. <clears throat> it also means that my sister can pursue her life and it means that I can pursue mine and my brother can pursue his because we continue to upgrade her existence in a way that she can also continue to live an independent life of her own. Larry found a remodeling contractor right here in Houston that specialized in this type of renovation. His name is Dan Bodden, and he carries the CAPS credentials, which means Certified Aging in Place Specialist, which means he completed extensive training through the Remodelers Council of the National Association of Home Builders, which will prepare him to find solutions with situations that face the Sanders family. Now we tagged along with Dan just to look at how he's going to handle some of the situations here. You can see that as you come in the entry door, it's very, very restricted and there's no room to maneuver. In fact, if we can step into the bathroom a little bit here, if you look down here at the uh, door jam uh, going into the other room there, you'll notice that the paint's been knocked off there and actually on both sides uh, just from trying to get the wheelchair in and out of this area. So if we move a little further into this room, you can see more problems come up. Look how the tub is difficult to access. And if you had somebody in this room with a caretaker and you're trying to use the commode facilities as well as the bathtub, there's just no room to maneuver whatsoever. So this has been a really difficult thing for the family. And we plan to fix it by opening up the space. 
These are just a few of the ideas that Dan is suggesting to the Sanders family to address some of the accessibility needs. Now Dan's challenge goes far beyond just eliminating the physical obstacles that the Sanders family has because everybody has a mental image of what a facility that is accessible really looks like. Far too institutional looking for most homeowners. Well, the Sanders were concerned about this, so Dolores' daughter-in-law, Francine, who's an interior decorator, is lending her talents to make sure that the project looks as aesthetically pleasing as it is functional. The first thing I'm going to be doing is talking to her about what her favorite colors are. And then we're going to see if we can do some of the color in this area here and in here. We can, we're talking about doing a sink that, for example, has granite around it. And we'll pick a granite that's going to work well with whatever colors it is she wants. We can also um, pick the fixtures for the sink and for the shower, all of which will get away from that what people sometimes think of as institutional kind of look and be something that is both attractive and something that is obviously very, very functional for her for the first time. So, you know, it's really great to be able to combine both of those elements. Dolores has made all of her selections and the work has already begun. And when we come back right after our simple solution, we'll take a look at how everything's going. It's time for this week's simple solution from home repair expert, Joe Truini. A rubber mallet is a very handy tool when you're assembling a woodworking project where you just don't want to damage the surface. Rubber mallets are also great for furniture repair projects where you have to tap parts apart or if you're putting down any type of glue down flooring, you can hammer it down without damaging it. A problem though with a black mallet like this is it leaves behind black marks and then you have to come back and sand it out and that's no fun. So one way to prevent that from happening is take an old cotton sock, preferably a nice thick gym sock like this, and simply slip it over the head of the mallet. Now it's fully covered and protected and you can hammer away and not leave behind any marks. So that's why you're always wearing just one sock. That's it. That, that's the reason. <laughs> now if you don't have a rubber mallet or you don't care to go out and buy one, you can get a similar effect by just using a simple nail hammer. But you have to protect the steel head because so you, you don't want to damage the workpiece. So go to the hardware store and pick up a rubber tip like this that's made for a chair leg and simply slip it over the head of the hammer. Now this is a one inch size, will fit most hammer heads and then tap it down until it's fully seated and now you can hammer away and not leave behind any marks. Well that's a great tip but just remember make sure when you're buying the chair tip that you're buying a white one not a black one. We're here in Houston, Texas where this home is being renovated to make it more wheelchair accessible for the homeowners and the contractor that's taking care of that work, Dan Bodden, who's a buddy of mine and has the CAPS designation. What does it mean, Dan? Well, the CAPS designation stands for Certified Aging in Place Specialist. This is an exciting new designation put on by the National Association of Home Builders. What it's about is training contractors and builders to modify and build homes so people can remain in them as they get older without uh, having to move out to nursing homes or assisted living. So well, it's, that's, a, that's something that a lot of people are facing these days, absolutely. unfortunately. And I know that you're, one of your jobs really is to look at the obstacles and figure out ways around it. And I can see right here already a uh, obstacle that you have to deal with in order to get a wheelchair in this home. Absolutely right. You can see that there's a, uh, let me open the door here. There's a step up here. And there's actually two or three obstacles right in one close area here, but we'll be building a ramp that goes from the top of this threshold on out uh, over the sidewalk, a nice gradual ramp with a non-slip surface uh -huh. uh, that can be removed later if the next homeowner doesn't need to have that ramp there. So we try to build uh, these features in where they're useful for the current occupant but can be taken away later if okay. need be. That makes sense. Now, uh, what about the threshold? How will you handle that? Yeah, we've got a plan for that. Let me show you. Okay. Take a look at this threshold right here. You'll notice that it sticks up almost an inch, and this is a very common type of threshold that people have in their homes. Mm -hmm. This is going away completely, so the wheelchair can roll right over this smoothly. Okay. You may be asking what we put in its place. Well, underneath the door here and the existing front door, mm -hmm. we're gonna put a device that actually springs down and the threshold comes from inside the door. Oh, that way that, you can really always seal it off then, even, even without this. Exactly. So all the weather and the bugs are kept outside, but there's a nice smooth surface here. Oh, that makes sense. That'll make it a lot easier for that wheelchair, but boy, another obstacle there, Dan. Yeah, you'll notice that there's a step up here in this entry hall. This is also a very common problem. Obviously, a wheelchair couldn't roll over that either. Right. So what we're going to do here is build a lightweight removable ramp that will actually be stored on the wall behind me. Hmm. And when it's needed, they can put it down. They can roll mom out of the house with no problem. When uh, she doesn't uh, need to be going in and out, they just pick the uh, ramp up, 
and it's a normal entry hall. Well, that's perfect. That's a good solution. But I know a lot of the work involving making a home wheelchair accessible involves the bathroom. I know you got a lot going on in there. We do. Let's go take a look. <laughs> All right, sure. Yeah, we're working on the ceramic tile in the bathroom today. All right, great. In fact, here's Oscar. Oscar's uh, wiping, doing the final wipe down on the ground oh, here. That looks, that looks great, and I can see that that will certainly accommodate a chair with the size of it and no curb at all. You're able to just roll right in there. Yeah, if you take a look, the floor is gently sloped to the drain, so we'll have a shower curtain across here and move that aside. It's easy to get in and out, whether you're in a wheelchair or not. This is a very easy to use shower. Oh, that's great. It really looks good. And what about grab bars? Are you planning on any grab bars around in there? We, we, we are planning to put grab bars, and we have put a plywood backing behind here, a waterproof plywood, so we can put those grab bars wherever we want to over even as her needs may change over time mm -hmm. so it's a very easy way of reinforcing the walls oh, that's perfect yeah, yeah really really just perfect now toilet right here and a space beside it to allow for a wheelchair to come up I guess on either side right this has been positioned so that it uh, fits the current owner's needs mm -hmm. her caretaker can help her on this side or on the shower side and it'll work great and we're gonna put in a higher toilet we're putting in higher toilets on all of our bathroom projects. Now they're just easier to get on and off of, about 17 inches high called comfort height toilets. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's, yeah. uh, I know a lot of people do request those. And hey, your cabinet guys did a great job here in creating a countertop that uh, she'll be able to roll right under. Right, you'll notice that this is completely open underneath here. We'll protect the pipes with insulation to be sure that they don't get too hot. Mm -hmm. And this will have a gorgeous granite top on it with a beautiful white sink. It's going to look very, very fashionable when it's done and functional. Now, I understand you're also putting in a special mirror here. Right. We're going to put a mirror in here that is a beautiful beveled mirror that will tilt, adjust for anyone's needs. So if you're a regular person standing here using the mirror, you would have it straight. If you're in a wheelchair, you can tilt it down a little bit. It'll be at the perfect angle for you to brush your teeth and do your grooming. Well, I'll tell you, Fran did a great job in picking out colors and all of the style of tile that definitely doesn't look like any oh, yeah. type of institutional look to it. No, it doesn't. And that's the mark of good design in any case is to have it look uh, personalized to the homeowner and not look institutional. Well, there's a lot to know about the aging in place concept and we're going to cover a lot more of it in just a few minutes. Let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out this week's best new product. By now, probably everybody in the country has at least one wet dry vac. Now, you may have chosen one of the real industrial strength models or one of the small portable units, but either way, they all do a great job in cleaning up any liquid spill that you may have or maybe some of the sawdust that you're creating out in the workshop. But they do take up a fair amount of very valuable floor space in any of these areas. So how about one that mounts to the wall? It's called the store and go. Now this one from Rigid has the mounting bracket that you attach to the wall and then the unit can clip on or off the mounting bracket so that you still can carry it around your house or shop if you need it. And the bracket itself serves as a nice holder for some of the hose that comes with the unit and you have a 14 foot hose and one that's 7 foot long so you have 21 feet of hose to reach out and around any of your workspace to clean that up. Also, you won't have to worry about finding an extension cord nearby because you have a cord that's 20 feet long, so that'll take care of that. And you got a convenient on and off switch right in the front. And you have a number of accessories that will hook to any of the hoses to make your cleaning even easier. And all of this together with all of the extensions, all of the hose, everything we talked about is only around $100. Contractor Dan Bodden's Houston office is a renovated home that also serves as a showroom full of options for aging in place. Hey Danny, let me show you something down here on this front door. Okay. If you'll notice right here, there's no threshold. You remember how there was a metal one on the Sanders house? Right. Uh -huh. We installed one of those door bottoms that I was telling you about on the bottom here. It has a rubber strip that comes down and seals out the weather and the bugs. And if you push that pin on the end, you'll be able to see how it raises oh, okay. and lowers. Okay, so when this pushes against the jam, uh, when it's closed, it automatically just goes right down to the floor. Exactly. Oh, that's pretty cool. And that could go on any door, I guess. That's right. Yeah, that's it great. works great. That's great. All right, our bathrooms are another thing we have in our showroom here to illustrate some attractive design and aging in place features. For example, this faucet right here, called a waterfall faucet, works very easily. It's a single handle lever faucet. Don't even need fingers to turn it on or off. Well, that's a very modern looking arrangement here too. Yeah, you'd never know that that had some aging in place yeah. uh, advantages to yeah, it. Pretty good idea. You know, showers are another area where people need a lot of help with aging in place things. So we've done a shower in here that's 
a moderately priced approach as opposed to one that we did recently that had some high-end features. Yeah, I understand you did one that had um, steam because uh, I think the gentleman benefited from the steam shower. Yeah, he had a muscle disorder, so he needed steam in a steam room in the shower. Uh, that's a more expensive kind of thing, but this is a, is a very moderately priced thing. This grab bar, for example, very attractive looking piece of hardware and matches the finishes of the other pieces. This is available at a home center, I'll any see. home center near you. This kind of hardware right here, again, can be is a lever handle, so it can be operated with, uh, with a hand that may not have full use of the fingers. Right. Mm -hmm. But this is my favorite thing right here. This slide bar shower head can be used up here for a tall person, right. or can be lowered down here for a child or someone in a wheelchair. Uh -huh. And of course, this lifts off so that you can use it to wash your dog or rinse your hair or whatever you like. So it's a very versatile, yeah, universal really design really kind of I've thing. I've seen those a lot and being able to just slide them up and down like that, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And I know a lot of people, whether they're physically challenged or not, love to have a seat in their shower. Absolutely. It's not just for ladies who love to shave their legs. <laughs> this is actually very useful for someone who gets a little tired from standing up when they're bathing. Mm -hmm. And children love it too. This is just a very handy feature and not an expensive one to put in. That's great. Okay. Yeah. Great. Hey, I got a door I want to show you over here. Okay. Take a look at these hinges over here. These are special hinges called swing away hinges and they allow the door to swing completely out of the way of the opening. You know, sometimes this gains you just enough extra inches so that you can get through the door with a wheelchair or a walker without having to do a bunch of extra remodeling. Well, that's definitely a lot cheaper than having to widen the doorway. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, we like to build with a lot of uh, extra natural sunlight in our projects too. Now, what benefit is that for someone that's, um, say, aging in place? Well, we it, it allows you to uh, have more natural light in the room because you lose your ability to see light as you get older so we need more light to read for example okay All so right. we do this with two methods we have two kinds of skylights we put up regular traditional non-leaking skylights <laughs> right. and also uh, the tubular skylights which are a little less expensive yeah, to those put are in. real popular and you can get those in some areas of rooms and some parts of the house that you can't get the traditional skylights. that's exactly right because they're a little smaller if you look over our heads right here we've got a remote control that will actually open not only the shades on these skylights, but also the skylight itself. So you can let in fresh air. If you're in a wheelchair, for example, the remote makes it really easy to manipulate all oh, the functions great. of the skylight. It's wonderful. Well, Dan, you got it all figured out. Well, and I've, I've learned a lot about aging in place that I never knew at all, and I hope our viewers did as well. And hey, when we come back, we'll take a look at the Sanders bathroom and see how everything turned out there. Let's head outside for Around the Yard with lawn and garden expert, Trisha Craven Worley. Trisha always has some great tips to make your yard work go a little easier. Here's one about gathering up leaves. Well, Danny, it's true that there are lots of ways to gather up leaves and of course trash bags work, but I've taken a medium sized box. This is about 24 inches by about 18, cut off three of the flaps and left one. And on the bottom, I've put a, a tape that's kind of a reinforced tape to keep it shut. Now, this flap actually has two purposes. One is to haul it away, but look what this does. Even if I were by myself, I'd be able to put my foot on it and still be able to rake in the leaves. Now, if you use a larger box, I think that it could be a little bit problematical because it could be just a, a little bit too big to maneuver and might get out of shape over time. Another fun thing about the box is after you've used it, if you want to store it, you can just cut that tape and fold it flat and then just tape it again. Yeah, this is pretty handy because if you have like a wheelbarrow and you put the leaves in there, many times you have to reach and take this right back out. So I could see where this could be real convenient. Yeah, and you can see it's not very heavy at all. I think it's light enough I could actually probably get it over my neighbor's fence there. Danny, don't even think about it. What a great idea, taking a nice older home like this and converting it to an office slash showroom to illustrate exactly what needs to be done to a home to make it more accessible. The idea certainly worked well for the Sanders family. All the modifications in the bathroom renovation is complete and it just turned out fantastic. Dan and his crew did a really good job. Hey, thanks for being with us. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos. And be sure to click around and watch some more videos while you're here.